Hey y'all, how's it going? Today I hope to do something a little bit different. You see, while it might look like I'm comparing a Windows desktop and iMac behind me, I'm actually trying to set up a pretty complicated setup. You see, in my video last year of adding a touchscreen to the MacBook Air, I had a couple of different solutions to get to the final conclusion, which was if you attach an external touchscreen to the Mac MacBook Air, you can get a touchscreen Mac experience. But obviously that experience wasn't perfect. Now since then there have been more additions like the Espresso display that have added that functionality in. But again, what we want is just a native touchscreen display. And similarly, what many people, the conclusion that many people came to with the launch of the new iMac was it kind of looks like an iPad on a stand, we should be able to touch it. Now, obviously some people don't like the idea of a touchscreen iMac, but I was curious whether I could get it to work. Now, there are a couple solutions to this, just like with the MacBook Air, one of them being having an external display with touchscreen capabilities and being able to just touch it instead. Now, I still have my 15 inch touchscreen from the MacBook Air video, but I don't think taking a 24 inch screen and then outputting it to a 15 inch screen and touching that would be the best of experiences. So what I had purchased online was this. This is a 24 inch touchscreen frame. And basically all it does is it senses whether some object, including your finger, has crossed the boundary of this frame, and then it registers that as a touch input. And so I've had this for about a week now, and I've been trying it out on my Windows desktop, which is why I have a 24 inch frame here. So the first simple solution to adding a touchscreen on the iMac is specifically setting this up and adding it to this display, then connecting it as an external display to the iMac. And then on the other end of this, you have an USB input because this acts like a typical touch interface that plugs directly into the back of the iMac, of course, with a dongle. And so we'll start out with this, but the real interesting thing and in why I got a 24 inch display and a 24 inch frame here is actually instead putting the frame directly on the iMac. Now, this is going to lead to some problems that we'll get to later, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So first, I'm going to mount this to my 24 inch touchscreen, connect this, the screen back to my iMac, and we'll see how the experience is. Let's get right to it. Okay, so I've got this second camera here so we can look at some of the detail. You can see from the top of this that I've already actually mounted this to the screen to try it out. I've only tried it out in Windows, so I wanted to save the Mac experience for y'all. But notably, I was using very, very tough adhesive. So if you look down here, I managed to take an L in the process of removing this. So we'll have to see if my adhesive now is a little bit better, but uh, that's what it's going to look like We'll just start mounting it now. So I have the same adhesive that I used in repairing my Surface uh, Laptop Go that notably gave me some issues, but it should be the right solution here. Let's just go ahead and try it. Okay, I've just lined adhesive across the top. That should be sufficient. This adhesive is very strong from what I've experienced as it falls down. Okay, let's see. Okay, maybe I put another layer of adhesive on across the bottom as well because it is falling off the bottom. Let's see. Okay, I've got the touchscreen frame set up. So let's just start by plugging this into my Windows computer just to show how it works generally. Okay, very simple. It now acts as a touchscreen input. And so if uh, I got this right, I should be able to just, yep, touch this screen now and be able to do whatever I want. Now, notably what you'll see is that the uh, touch screen actually comes down further. It's actually taller than the rest of the display. So as a result, it's actually, um, the way that it inputs is a little bit lower. So if I touch on the screen, you'll see that my cursor actually hits the desktop even if I'm touching the task taskbar. So that's a little bit frustrating and you'll have to get used to it, but let's try it out. Let's see if we can get something up. So, so we'll open Spotify just to sh show it working. Here we go. And then I'll shuffle the playlist. The scrolling performance actually works very, very impressively, which is great. And 
let's go ahead and play this. So yeah, in general, one of the problems with this is the fact that it actually sits a little bit above the screen, especially because the bezels of the screen actually project it even further. So you expect to actually touch the screen, but you're actually hitting the touch layer before you hit the screen. So as a result, if you're going in with an angle, it's actually gonna register a portion of your finger that's not correct. And so it's not perfectly accurate. But hopefully what's going to solve that issue on the iMac, we'll have to see, is since it doesn't have any projected bezels out, it's just one flat piece of glass, that should actually solve that issue to an extent. So now let's go ahead and attach this display to the iMac and we'll see if iOS, or excuse me, and Mac OS can handle a touchscreen just fine. So yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Okay, so after tracking down some dongles, I managed to connect both the USB and the uh, VGA cable to the iMac. This notably, this monitor notably has VGA and uh, DisplayPort, which I didn't have a DisplayPort adapter. And so it's connected via VGA, which is sending a 1080p signal. I mirrored the two displays between the two, and now we can try out what the experience of using this touchscreen is like. And it works exactly as expected. It's actually very fast and react respondent? Res responsive, that's the word, responsive. It's very fast and responsive, and I'm actually really impressed so far. So we're gonna go ahead, let's start downloading some applications on here in order to see what the experience of using applications on here feels like. Okay, a little bit of an update. When I was installing the drivers for this, notably, it said it required drivers on the Amazon listing, but it was working out of the box. But in order to get the multi-touch working, I wanted to install all the drivers, and it is the UPDD software, the same software that I was using in my MacBook Air review. Now, notably, that software actually had an issue where if you entered more than 100 touches or something in one session, it actually asked you to reset the device before you could do it again without paying like an 80 or $90 fee. And so that's what I'm a little bit worried about, but from touching this the first couple times, it doesn't look like I'm going to hit that hundred or that hundred touch limit, or it's not there anymore. I've been trying to touch the screen over and over again, and I'm not getting any sort of pop-ups. But <clears throat> so now I have it working, and I installed LumaFusion in order to test what the experience is like. And just like on my MacBook Air, the experience is very, very seamless, very smooth. Now the accuracy is not fantastic. If you watch, I'm going to try and hit this play button right here and I got it. There we go. Oh, I missed it. I'm too high. Yeah, it's not perfect. And I imagine that if you're going to do this for any long period of time, you probably want to set all the elements on the display to be very, very large. So it's harder to miss them. But obviously this isn't the solution that I'm looking for. And so let's go ahead, pause this. Let's see if I can download some more applications. And while I do, I'm going to try porting this over to the iMac to see if it works directly on the display. What I'm going to do is I'm going to detach the USB from this touchscreen and I'm going to start trying to remove the touchscreen frame from this. When I first tried to grab it, I was actually having a lot of issues getting it off. So it turns out that adhesive was even more strong than I expected. All right, that is, was a lot tougher than I expected. So thankfully, this is the cheap display. And so even though I've got now adhesive residue on the top and bottom, it's not a big deal for me. Now, the good news is I'm just going to be throwing this on a $1,300 Mac. So we'll have to see how that works out for me. Okay, this time I'm going to put the adhesive directly on the back of the touchscreen panel. So then I can avoid putting it directly on the Mac and hopefully it's going to come off a little bit easier, but we'll have to see. And this leads us to our first issue that should be blindingly apparent. So the Mac screen is not actually 24 inches. It's instead 23 and a half inches, if I'm not mistaken, which means that this 24 inch frame is going to go over. So let's see, we'll obviously have to adjust my touch inputs to account for that, but we'll have to see if that works out. And I don't know if y'all can hear, but my Mac's fan is actually going quite fast right now. 
just to the point where I would think that I'm editing a video, but I'm not. It's just this one application, this iPad application that's open. So it must be pretty graphics intensive maybe, but let's see. I have no idea how to play this game or what this game is, so we'll have to learn that together. It actually works. Like it, it actually truly works. Okay, just like in my other touchscreen Mac video, I've got Monument Value pulled up here, so I can go ahead and try it. Notably, it was pretty impressive the last time I tried it on the MacBook Air, but um, yeah, okay. Very natural, very smooth. I will say that this is pretty accurate. Now, notably, it probably kind of gravitates towards the path even when I'm off with my click. So could be that happening, but it feels like it's actually like pretty accurate relatively. Okay, I just did two things. First of all, I turned off dark mode so you guys could see what's going on. And second of all, I actually turned off or turned up display scaling. So everything on the screen should be appear larger like the buttons for closing or manipulating windows. This is because macOS is very, very much not meant for touch input. So all the elements on the screen were too small. And so hopefully now it's going to be a better experience. All right, I used to love playing this game back when I was in high school or college, but obviously I haven't been able to do so with the Mac and now I can. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Let's see. Okay, no, okay, this is interesting. Okay, the way that the touch screen is working is because of the UPDD commander, it actually registers a click and hold as a left click, or excuse me, a right click. And so that's why you see this little bar traveling around my finger, it's actually registering a right click. And so let me see if I can turn off UPDD commander in order for this just to reg register as a primary right click. Okay, so what's the bottom line? Well, it's absolutely obvious that macOS is clearly not designed for touch input, which is why a lot of my interactions today have been so frustrating. Now, granted, some of that frustration has also come from the touch actual sensitivity being larger than the screen itself. And so as a result, it is often not completely accurate. Now, obviously the experience of using a true capacitive touch screen on an iMac would be better, but it's pretty awesome the fact that you have this glass display on the iMac, which feels like a natural touch surface, and adding this is, as we saw, very easy to do. Now, I notably only used a very, very small amount of adhesive. This touch screen thing can be found on Amazon for around 150 bucks, which frankly is pretty expensive for just kind of a cool experiment like this. But if you legitimately want a touchscreen for your iMac, it might be a solution. I hope that some sort of manufacturer ends up releasing a true dedicated touchscreen frame for the iMac that fits properly, and then I would probably buy it. Now, granted, we'll have to talk in a future video about whether I'm going to keep this iMac or not. You have to see in the review, full review that's coming up soon. But in general, I've been really impressed how easy and seamless it is to just simply plug this into the USB on the back of the iMac and immediately get the experience of tapping on the screen. As you saw in my video of adding a touchscreen to the MacBook Air, the experience is not always that seamless. And so, pretty good. Now admittedly, the ergonomics of using a touchscreen iPad, <laughs> Now admittedly, the ergonomics of using a touchscreen desktop are even worse than that of using a touchscreen laptop, which are worse than a tablet. But it's interesting because over the years, there were a lot of Windows all-in-ones that did support touch. And then to a lesser extent, back in the Windows 8 days, there were actually touchscreen monitors that were more common. But we've seen those basically go away. I'm curious to see whether Apple will ever decide to release a touchscreen iMac. It's probably less likely than a MacBook, but we'll have to see in the future. 
If you like this type of video, be sure to check out my projects playlist where I try all sorts of weird experiments like my MacBook Air touchscreen and using an Xbox to do my homework, which was an adventure in itself. If you like my type of videos or you like reviews, I do traditional reviews. Be sure to get subscribed to catch more videos just like that. Like and let me know down in the comments of what you think about this experience and whether you think it'd be the right solution for a touchscreen iMac. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. See ya. Oh yeah, and quick shout out to Tampa Tech who has the first video when I searched touchscreen iMac that shows up with an actual touchscreen iMac. Now notably this was an older model iMac and it's an entire frame that goes around it. So very similar concept to this. So be sure to check out that video which I'll have linked in the description. I think this might be a slightly newer solution but might maybe less elegant. I'm hoping that some manufacturer ends up building a true touchscreen frame for this iMac and I think the opportunity is out there so hopefully someone out there gets right to it.